So this is the structural battery pack for the pack vibration testing and structural testing. This is the main frame of the battery box and then the uh, battery pack sets in the middle of that and welds, welds in all the way around the edge. We're also building additional battery packs that will go for electrical testing and safety testing. That's cool, you can join me. That's nice. <laughs> we'll go again. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We are driving the Bollinger B2 pickup truck. This is actually my second time driving the truck. The first time, Hunter didn't like how I was driving it. <laughs> So I got kicked out. <laughs> Where do you want it? Get out. Get out. Where do you want it? Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> no face. No, I don't. <laughs> At least he's honest. Oh, no. It's like a false sense of authority for him. I am a program manager here. I work on build timings. I manage the subsystems, procurement for the battery, thermal low-volt and high-volt electrical subsystems. Eric, it's coasting when I, like, I can run this whole track in, like, 45 seconds and I don't touch the accelerator at all. Mm -hmm. Less than. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing as, like, it's set up to be, like, a automatic trans where you let oh, off okay. the throttle. Okay. Or let off the brake and it goes, like, has some creep torque on it. Okay. Alrighty, then it does yeah. what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it shouldn't be burning energy while you're not moving, but once you start moving, it starts ramping in. My name is Dallas Sutherland. I'm the interior and exterior buyer for Bollinger Motors. The activity of the day right now is testing out uh, the B2, which is something that I've been wanting to do since last September of uh, 2019. It's now September 2020. We've come full circle, and uh, it's time to take this baby for a spin. To our vehicle build, I was uh, greatly in charge of this steering wheel here. These oh, yeah. nice toggle banks that you see here. Finally crafted by our designer, Hunter Erdman, and uh, worked with him very closely on a lot of this interior stuff that you see in this vehicle today. Who do you think? Stinky, stinky, stinky. I should have gone to the Auto zone the O'Reilly's by my house just to see if they had them. I actually completely forgot. Right. I'm getting married next weekend. Really? Yes, sir. Right on. Eight days. For four, three days, four days after, we're just gonna go. Uh, we got a camp, got a cabin in the mountains in Tennessee. Uh, hey, uh. Oh, nice. A 90, so just put, put these two right there. No. Just move it down one. And then we're just going to do kind of a, a thing by ourselves for a couple days. And then we're going to go, I think, to Jamaica. Oh, very cool. Next. Yeah. So right now we are hooking up the production style cooling hoses with the correct clamps and everything to our I-beams. So we'll have the correct length on everything. And then once that's all hooked up, this is gonna be disassembled once again. Uh, because in the meantime, while we're doing this, we're having our outside extrusions cut right now. So by the time I get done here and we can get this disassembled, they should be done with our extrusion. And I will finish welding everything together.
driving around in the V2. <laughs> Half a mile from my house, actually. Oh, nice. My name's Ken Schowler. I was invited here to, to visit the new factory in Oak Park because I'm uh, on pre-order for one of the V2 trucks. Pretty excited about that. I actually ordered it when they were in my general region in Ferndale, and then they moved literally half a mile from my house, so that's <laughs> even more exciting. And then they called me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess in parallel with the, uh, the full pack build, we're putting together a single um, string of our battery pack with functional battery cells um, to test charging and discharging in our battery controller mainly. Um, so it's on this bench here. So this is uh, my super robust cardboard organizer for the um, module balancing boards. So these, there's uh, eight of these per string and each one controls basically two battery modules. So what these do is they monitor the condition and temperature of the, uh, the battery cells within the module um, to make sure that everything's working correctly and we're operating within safe parameters. Um, these are all harnessed up. Um, connected to this little guy right here, which is the uh, the string control board. So what this does is this takes the information from the uh, the module boards, um, interprets it, <laughs> and then sends it along to our vehicle control unit so we can uh, you know make good choices about what we're doing with the battery. Nice. Yep. And I uh, the purpose of this bench, um, why it's so messy is it's temporary. It was uh, just to make sure that everything was talking correctly together. Lots of parts. So what we have here is our battery I-beam extrusion. So what this does is it, it mounts all the battery modules on the outsides of these. And through the middle here, you can kind of see that all of our um, liquid coolant is running through the inside channels here of the, of the extrusions. Um, generally, most solutions out there have some sort of battery module mounting structure, and then they have a separate cold plate um, for each module. Um, so what we came up with is an I-beam that mounts both battery modules on each side of it and then in combination with that is you run these hollow channels right through the middle of it so that way all your coolant can run right through the middle of the I-beam and become as space efficient and as dense as you can with the mounting structure and the cooling package. Safety first, Mark. <laughs> With light painting, you can kind of go anywhere as long as it's dark. Um, it really becomes very much like painting, where uh, you know your creativity is really what limits the kind of stuff you can do. For this one, we did multiple passes behind these diffused glass panels and created the silhouette of the truck, but it still required a lot of cleaning up. So from here, I masked out just the truck, and we were able to do a couple of different images with the truck um, kind of being highlighted like this. Uh, I handed the light bars to uh, some of my coworkers and had them kind of go crazy and do some interpretive dances. 
and you can get some of this crazy chaotic effect here. Um, that was a pretty big hit amongst, uh, amongst the team. I like that you can kind of do it anywhere and anytime. Um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty flexible uh, form of photography. <laughs> this is all gearing up to do the, the structural integrity test. We're gonna go do a vibe test next week mm -hmm. with the full pack. So we're gonna be building up three more of these. So, so far it's, you know, it's a little bit of teething issues. You wanna make some tweets here and there, um, but uh, it's all part of the process. to be assembling all the high volt uh, electronics, contactors, bus bars. We gotta make sure everything else is, is good to go before, uh, before we get to those. This is one of the, the uh, monitoring boards that was on the cardboard buck over there. Um, I 3D printed these little risers um, to clip them to the, uh, the beam. Nice. See all the sharpie marks? That's uh, basically gonna help us with assembly to make sure we put the, the right modules and the right boards in the right positions. Um, because it's, once this thing goes together, it's a little tricky to take apart because of how much it weighs. Um, so we want to get it together correctly the first time. Well, do you use these ones, right? The studs on the inside or on one side? Say what? For the long eye beams, we're just doing stud, pressed studs on one side. Yep. Yeah, because it'll be that, that one zigzag, yep. the hex thing. Mm -hmm. yep. The uh, brakes and steering are very strong. Uh, strong in what way? Um, that they can handle a car that's a lot heavier. It means that I, I feel comfortable going a little faster because I know that those will work. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Maurice. Um, I, I don't know, one of the design engineers designed a, parts on a lot of systems in this car, but mostly architecture parts. Okay, so these right here are going to be our bulkhead pass-throughs. The, the, the reason there's a window is so we can have our fully assembled box with everything inside and then at the end we have a bulkhead plate that will go here. It's got a seal so it's watertight. Don't hook up anything, Don't you know, because those fittings will put a force on, uh, on these and it'll twist it, right? So you, you assemble all your contactors, your bulkheads, everything. To this guy so fully assemble it off the bench check it can you see it take it on move that hose out of the way and we bolt it on what does it feel like it feels great it's smooth it's just open air everywhere like such a tease driving this thing in the parking lot. Oh, I know. No we way. just want to go to the trails. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of connections on here that, that are going to be really difficult when you got your, all your signal harnesses and your and your contactors and your high volt bus bars and such that you, you're not going to have access to once you drop it in here. So that's a huge benefit for us. And th this big perimeter here, this big window, this basically allows us to run the entire pack without the lid on. Prior designs, we've had stuff going through the lid and it was a total pain in the ass to assemble. So um, now we don't have to worry about any of that. The lid, all it does is seal the top, makes it IP67, and we don't have any sort of connector, low volt, high volt communication going through the lid anymore. I came looking for y'all. You did? I did. <laughs> I was on a mission. I applied to like every job that I qualified for. <laughs> Amazing. Oh no, this is good. I'm gonna go this way. Can I go this way?